So, hi everybody, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud on the Road Show, World Bear Weekend Edition. Uh, I'm not going to give a number because I don't know when this is airing, <laughs> but we'll we'll figure that out. But first, uh, for those of you that have not uh, been to the show before or know who we are, I feel like I should do a couple of intros. Uh, my name is Gary, is one of the co-hosts, and with me is hello everyone, it's Damon. Hi. And uh, we are both in Orlando, Florida, um, or as the GPS down here likes to say, Florida, <laughs> which Drew, my roommate, found very amusing. Um, so, uh, yeah, this, this setup's going to look a little different. So for those of you that are used to seeing us, um, typically we are in our own homes and we are recording via Skype. And uh, Jeff and, you know, as we put a whole bunch of pieces together. This is different, though. And if you've seen on the road shows before, this is different because we typically are in the same room and we have a camera set up and we do this thing, you know, and well, that was the plan, kids. Yes, it was the plan. (laughs) So I arrived here uh, Saturday night before going into the week of the run. Uh, It was planned that way. Drew and I, we had a different hotel reservation. We went and did some of the parks. Um, You'll probably see a little bit of that. I'll probably put in either into the Patreon version or maybe I'll stick it in here or something. Um, I didn't record a whole lot of that, but needless to say, it was a vacation uh, that led into the run. So we were at the other hotel that we had off uh, nearby. It was only about a mile and a half away from Saturday night through to Thursday morning. Um, And... So we did a couple of parks. We did Ma- uh, Magic Kingdom for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Lots of fun. I'll probably talk about it more in detail another time. Um, then we went to Epcot the next day with Chester, former co-host of uh, Cubs Out Loud. And we uh, were there for the Food and Wine Festival. So we did lots of eating, lots of drinking. It was a very long day. Um, uh, one thing that Damon and I are in agreement on as Northern boys, uh, it is hot. It is hot as balls in this fucking city. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut you off for just a second here. And we'll get into, like, the event here at World Bear, because I've been here since Wednesday night. And there are things to talk about about the place here, where we're staying now. But Mama is hot. (laughs) It's been, like, 90-something, like, every day, I think. So... And back home, it is in the 50s. So it is almost a, quite a temperature culture shock. Also, if you happen to hear anything in the background, um, like Thumpa Thumpa, yes, that is a poolside DJ that is not far away from my room. Um, Drew and I decided, because we're getting older and we haven't done a run in a couple of years, we upscaled. So we got VIP packages. We got a two-room King Suite. Mama, let me tell you, like, I, I'm actually enjoying the room. It doesn't have, it's not, it's not 100% perfect, but it's a good 90, 90 plus percent. I'm, I'm oh, loving yeah. it. And, and uh, so you're here in building three. Yes. I'm in building seven or villa seven. Guess where the pool is? Right in front of So from noon. Noon to midnight. Midnight. If you can hear it, I don't know if you can. I can hear it right now. It, it's constant. It's an all wonderful thing. Yeah, my head is bobbing to the bass beat. Like it's the first night we were here, I put an earplug in, and one in the ear that was up to the ceiling as I was laying in bed, just because I wanted to dampen some of the sound, but I didn't want to like block both of my ears for hearing. In case Drew came back and tried to talk to me or something, because then he would think I'm dead, like if I'm not responding. Uh-huh. Um, so that being said, uh, to give you a little bit of an understanding, um, well, I, so that catches us up to the arrival for here on Thursday. And Damon, you said you guys flew in Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Correct. Uh, had a little bit of a flight delay, yes? Um, there was a bit of a flight delay. There was a four-hour layover in Chicago. So we flew Cincinnati to Midway, and then four hours later, and like an additional like 15, 20 minutes, I flew from Midway to Orlando. And 
we got here. I think we actually touched down right before we left. So we technically got here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, fly in and then Drew came and picked us up. Thank you. Uh, uh, getting here. We got here, I know it was after almost. Yeah. So, uh, that, that's, uh, you actually didn't have much of a delay. I had a significant delay. I was supposed to arrive at, let me see, 9.40 at night, I think. And I didn't get in until almost midnight. Ugh. So, and I had a direct flight from Pittsburgh to MCO. But um, lo and behold, found out for my Southwest flight, the one flight attendant who was supposed to be on our flight on their previous flight coming into Orlando um, cut their hand and they needed medical attention. So they had to leave and we had to wait to get another flight attendant. And the reason for the long delay was to get a flight attendant that would come in from Chicago to Pittsburgh and then immediately change from Pittsburgh to join our flight to go down here to Orlando. Wow. So, yeah, um, she got applause when she showed up at the gate because we had been waiting like two plus hours. Everyone was very patient, but everyone was also kind of tired. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so but uh, so the, the beginning leading into the run was fine uh, for us as far as the vacation aspect of things. Until Wednesday night. And then I'll explain why this video looks a little strange. Uh, David and I are both in my two room suite. He is about six feet away from me on the other side of this divider paneled door situation over here. And I'm here. over in the bed part, uh, the bedroom part. He's in the living room part. Um, and we are using our separate devices with Wi-Fi and data connections to try to make this work. Because the plan was we would both be side by side, probably on a couch or at a table, talking to like a cell phone or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was but, planned. Yeah, that was the plan. But uh, the world and Mother Nature had different plans for that. Um, in case you can't tell a little bit by the sound of my voice, um, I've been under the weather. So Wednesday, um, Drew and I met up with uh, current world title holders, um, Pup Zio, a.k.a. AJ, who's been on the podcast, and um, Zach who is a uh, current world bear and uh, his husband, Kelly, uh, they met us at Disney Springs at the polite pig, beautiful, yummy barbecue joint. Um, and the five of us had dinner and they had to leave to, I think come back to the hotel to rest or something. And then maybe go do something else uh, that evening before things festivities were going to start and set up uh, on Thursday morning. So we had met up with them. We did a little shopping and then um, came back. So we get back to our other hotel and I realized like when we were at Disney Springs, I'm like, God, I'm like tired. And like, yeah, I did two days of like parks, but that was Sunday and Monday and this is Wednesday. I'm like, all right. Um, we get back to the hotel and um, what was the second thing? I was tired. And, oh, I started to feel warm, but not like, but I'm like, I'm in, I'm in air conditioning in the hotel room and Drew likes it almost like an ice box. He, he's hot blooded. <laughs> so I always know when I travel with him, the AC is cranked. Um, and I'm like, okay, so we have the room set to like 66. And like, if I'm feeling warm, something's up. So I decided to go grab my little rapid test and waited my 15 minutes. And lo and behold, she got me, gal. She got me, gal. <laughs> so uh, the rapid test came up positive for COVID. Mind you, Chester is also rooming with Drew and I. And he joined us on Sunday. So Drew has been with me for, since Saturday. We have traveled together. We've been in a car together. We've had meals together. We've been to the parks together. Um, and then Chester joined us on Sunday. So I went on a whole emotional journey mm -hmm. because now 
I'm discovering that after two and three quarter years, I now have COVID. Mm -hmm. And all the impacts of that. What is that going to mean to the two of them as my roommates? What's that's going to, and then I kind of, I didn't freak out, but I got very concerned. So I, you know, thought for a good 15, 20 minutes and then I ended up messaging AJ and I was like, um, Hey, it was great to have dinner with the three of you. It was really great to meet Zach and Kelly. Gotta, gotta, gotta. And he's like, yeah, it was fun. This and that. And I was like, I get one of our... right, right, right. And by the way, <laughs> FYI, um, so this has happened. I said, I just did a rapid. Here are the results. He's like, oh. And I said, so I am gravely concerned about the run because I don't want to be the cause of issues for you guys because you're both judges. Mm -hmm. Zach and AJ. Um, and expected to do a bunch of things. Um, so uh, to skip ahead, I went online. I set up a test to treat clinic visit the next morning here in Orlando. Um, that was a whole adventure I'll probably tell another day. Long story short, it took three visits in three different locations to finally get seen on Thursday morning. But I did get seen and I got Paxlovid. So I'm now uh, more than halfway through my Paxlovid uh, regimen. That's part of why my voice is a mess because uh, while the virus has been doing its thing, I have a sinus infection, I got nasal drip, uh, my throat's a little raw, and this is the worst my voice has sounded in a couple of days. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm on the mend. Things are good. Um, yeah. I did not check in for the run. Drew and I talked about it. And so while we're here at the hotel, I said, what am I going to do? Like, I can't really. That's not true. I could theoretically do the run. As a person who works in public health, <laughs> I find it very <laughs> irresponsible to be a run participant, even though I have some N95s that they gave me at the clinic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have been wearing my N95s like pretty much nonstop except for eating and drinking. Um, and when I'm in bed using my CPAP. Um, Drew has tested, he's been negative. Uh, I believe Chester has also tested and been negative. Um, I don't know if AJ and um, Kelly and Zach have tested, but I know everyone's like that was in close vicinity has been kind of, um, you know, watching mm -hmm. and paying attention to their symptoms. And One of the things is, I said, most likely I caught it at the very beginning because it took a while for the line to show up on the test. And then I did it yesterday as my 48 hour like follow up. Mama, let me tell you, 90 seconds into the 15 minute wait time, the line was there. <laughs> at five minutes in, the line is so dark. Like, it is darker than the control line. <laughs> so the test is like, oh, you got it. You got it, and you got it. Positive. <laughs> it should be just like a big dark line and then just like another line. <laughs> but yeah, it, so, um, so I found out about this on Thursday. Wait, no. Yes. My phone right now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, you know, uh, Drew picked us up for, yeah, that's right. Because Drew had to pick us up for the airport. He explained it and uh, he picked us up. Because he wore a mask uh, in the car. And I was wondering when I got in the car, like, why is he... And, the mask, like, and then he kind of explained. So, from my perspective, it was like, well, it sucks because, yeah, you're here, you're here in Orlando, you're kind of, for having to run an event and everything is going to be this big, yeah, this big thing, it's a big event, and you were planning on celebrating and having a big vacation. I was, like, heartbroken for that for you. But uh, I knew, given your reaction, that you would be more cautious and do what you can to limit risk and limit it. Having said that, um, I do find it funny that the run was saying, hey, 
you need to have a negative test and all this stuff. Uh, uh, negative test or have your vaccination up to, group, up to date to do it. And they're not checking. I checked into the run on Thursday morning with VIP. I got VIP as well. And I was, I had my, I literally had my physical card with me. And I was like, they're probably going to ask me in this. I did not have They didn't. So, again, um, I appreciate the effort, and I'm hoping everyone is valid and what have you, but there's a part of me that's like, well, it's disappointing to hear that they weren't checking on those. Um, I had even said to Drew, I was like, oh, shit, I didn't bring my vaccination card with me. I didn't I didn't pay attention to that detail in the email. I'll say that. Um but I do have a photo of it loaded in my phone. Plus, I think I have a digital version of my vaccination status. However, the bivalent newest booster just became available right before the run. And I couldn't get it because I got my meningococcal just before the run. So I timed it so I would have my two-week period. And for a lot of vaccinations, either you get multiple at the exact same time together or you space them up by two weeks. And I'm supposed to be getting my influenza on October 6th. So, in fact, when I went to the test to treat, they said, well, do you want your influenza shot now? And I was like, no, it's okay. I have it scheduled for the 6th. They're like, well, we can give it to you today. And there's a part of me that's like, well, I appreciate what the nurse is trying to say to me. I'm like, I'm already probably going to feel sick. And what I don't want <laughs> is a double whammy. Because, like, if this particular flu vaccination hits me for some reason like I might already be down for the count I don't need you to beat the shit out of me like that's, that's, right. that's not how this works right yeah I have the whole um, so I got my monkey pack vaccine and I actually got my second one on Wednesday before we flew down uh, so it, I've, I've had the first one and I got that a month ago but I have this one now and I'm like okay cool I wanted to go ahead and get it because it was okay. Long story start really quick. Uh, I had scheduled my vaccine so that I would get the second one a week before we flew down. And they canceled that appointment and moved me to the following week, which then pushed the next one, which has to go four weeks later, to Wednesday. I guess that'll be fine. Granted, if I had a reaction to the first one, I would have been worried about the second one. So far, it's been okay. Uh, it's just a really big red mark. On no. So uh, that was, you know, and then I did see while we were here, um, World Bear Weekend did team up with the local health department. They had 100 shots for monkeypox available. Um, had I not uh, decided, well, I didn't decide. If Ms. Rona hadn't decided I was going to become a dancing partner, um, I yeah. might have gone down to get my first monkey box because I can't get it locally. Uh, we don't have enough uh, cases to make it possible to get vaccination prophylactically unless you've been exposed. So, um, which is, I guess, uh, the most professional way for me to tell the world that I'm not a whore. Uh, so that's, you know, kind of the, the standard as it is right now. Um, so, yeah, that, that really threw WBW this year for me on a whole different uh, direction and stuff. So, yeah. So that's that's the reason, uh, in a, kind of a long way to say everything looks very different. It's a, it's a different setup of um, how we're operating. Uh, but, you know, so I realized that the digital and the audio might not be the optimal, and I kind of don't care because, you know. At the end of the day, we did what we did. Got what we got done. Get some half is done. It's over. We can't do anything else about it like that. Right. And now I realized I have to wait. I have to. I have to look up the new standard because I don't even know what it is. Now because I've become a uh, positive, I have to wait a certain period of time before I can even get boosted. Because the theory is, I won't need a booster because I've you know now contracted it. But I'm like, 
Yeah, but that doesn't mean I don't still want the booster at some point. Right. So anyways. Yeah, so uh, that was the start of, of World Bear Weekend. You know, it was like, what do we do? How do I maneuver this, figure out the next steps? Um, ultimately, it's like, well, we're still going to go. But I, you know, I told Drew, I said, I'm not going to check in for the run because I can't do anything. I can't, mm-hmm. in good conscience, go to any of the social functions. Now, technically... It's it, 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 This is mixed messaging. The CDC says I need to isolate for five days. And yet it also talks about that if I have to be in spaces, I should wear a respirator or a really good quality mask. So like an N95 or better. So, yeah, in theory, I could like wear the N95 everywhere I go because that's such a, fa- a, a fabulous fashion statement, you know, to run around with one of these. Um, you know, poolside or in the pool, mm. uh, you know, in the play space, uh, you know, <laughs> or well, you won't be able to use this part <laughs> in play space. I, this is my money maker, baby. Like this, this is what I'm all about. Like <laughs> that's the other part that sucks about this. No pun intended. Um, mm. No, and, like, so, you know, meals, like, all this stuff is just kind of off the table. Yeah. Um, I do want to give a shout-out and a thank you to AJ and Chester. They've both um, uh, been checking in pretty regularly, and are like, how are you doing? What's going on? How are you feeling? So I've been kind of giving them updates. Um, I did have a slight fever, um, but it's stopped. It's been more than 24 hours, so yay. Um, The Paxlovid medication uh, does have a a not-so-pleasant side effect um, of taste, so I haven't lost my sense of taste, but um, a lot of people describe it as metallic, and I can kind of understand that. The only thing that it, it, it absolutely represents for me personally is if you've ever eaten or drank grapefruit juice, mm. like you've ever had grapefruits or, or drank grapefruit juice, that acrid sensation you get at the back of your tongue, of your palate, is exactly what's there, but it's like there almost all the time. Mm. So it's kind of annoying as as a thing. But I haven't lost my my smell or my taste. So, like, I can still taste and eat and drink, you know, and, and not feel like, you know, things just aren't there. So, um, knock on wood. Um, I'm blessed on that part of it. But so, yeah, it's – but it's running its course. And I've got this sinus infection thing that's been kind of draining, which is making my throat raw. So, you know, as I was saying to Damon, it, you know. I had this sensation in the middle of the night last night that I was like, my throat feels like I've been fucking like sucking a lot of dick. Um, and that is not what's happening. So I don't know how I feel about this. I've, I've now gone to a bear run with a first time ever incident of being, you know, ill at a bear run and yet still having some feelings like I've been doing some things at said run. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the, that's kind of the worst feeling. It's like I'm at the run and I'm doing all these things and I can't I can't do anything yet. Why do I feel like I did everything? Well, yeah. so well, not everything, but. I I will say this. Um, it's been a couple of years since going to a bear run, so I've been living a little vicariously through others, as I will with you, Damon. Um, I I, I want to know honestly your thoughts about the run because this is what I've taken in so far. This complex is huge. Um, it has multiple buildings. One of the earliest snafus from what I've discovered is if you booked your hotel like you were supposed to through the website of the run, it like basically took you over to the Hilton Doubletree and then you booked your room and it was under the World Bear group rate. But prior to arrival, I think a day beforehand, I got an email that said oh, you should use the Hilton Honors app. You can pick your room. I'm like, pick my room? Like, pick my room location? Like, that's interesting. So I talked to Drew about it. Uh, This is a long story for another day I'm not going to get into, but I've I've never really been with Hilton. Um, There is someone in Seattle, Washington of another gender that apparently used my email, or actually I think someone in 2014 fat-fingered and mistyped the email and made it mine. I couldn't get logged in. It, it was a big kerfuffle. So I was super pissed at Hilton. I tried fixing it via chat and email. They told me to get a court order. 
for a name change. I was like, <laughs> y'all are fucking stupid. Like, this is not my problem. So anyways, I was like, screw it. So when I checked in, I just took the room that they gave me. But I started already hearing that people that we were apparently all supposed to be in the tower. At least that was my understanding is that we were supposed to be condensed as a bear run in one group. But this email thing that automatically came from Hilton, I think, screwed up everything for location because then people were just picking prime real estate wherever they wanted to go on property. And there's like, I don't have the map near me. It's like, I don't know, 10 buildings or some craziness. Something like that. So, like, some people, yeah. like, so where we are in this suite is near our pool, our pool, because there's multiple pools on property. Um, so we're theoretically yeah. near where the party and all that kind of stuff is going on. Hence the 12 hours a day, thump a thump of music. <sighs> yeah, it's been interesting. So, fuck a lot. Here we go. Um, <laughs> this has been challenging. I will use that. As I mentioned before, it's hot here in Orlando. All of the rooms are like over this side of the of the complex. There's seven or eight buildings that kind of around this family the family it's called the family fun pool on the map but it's it's our family pool uh and we've got it for a whole weekend and that's great and wonderful because we can do these parties all night so but the event the um uh, Contest the party, the dances are all the way across the complex in the room, the building called the uh, Palms Complex. And it is quite a distance. You literally have to walk across the property, past the lobby, past the tower, past more buildings like villas. And then you get to the conference center, and that's where everything is. So vendor mark, all of that is all there. Um, as I mentioned, it's challenging. Um, as big, burly, bearish men that we are, uh, walking is not our forte. It's not our lives. <laughs> so the idea of literally walking across campus is it is it is challenging and it makes I think it's making it's having an effect on what people are doing so um, since Gary hasn't been at the event I'll kind of give a little recap I went to the contest Thursday night and Friday night Thursday night I showed him a video they have this majestic group set up and they've got the stage they've got tables maybe a third were full on Thursday night. And then Friday, I would say maybe half. But I feel that there's a reason. So at the same time that they're having the contest, here at the pool, they're having their glow party, their dance night, their, you know, enjoy the pool and dance music and game, all that stuff for a like day, 12 hours. So if you don't want to, you know, track across this campus to get to the contest, I can just sit out of pool or sit or dial a game or whatever I want to do. I mean, there's plenty of people here and Growler is popping up. <laughs> so... Yeah, so um, I was having that feeling about it, and I was in, I'm, that was my concern. I remember talking about this last year, so I went to World Fair in 2021 in Memphis, and the idea that I mentioned in saying was, I remember specifically mentioning power. 
and it overlooked the pool and all of this stuff. So I feel like something happened in the contract or maybe there was a choice made on the tool to take, what have you, everything. Because we do not have a whole complex, obviously. There are hundreds of Right. And one of the things I want our listeners and viewers to understand is this property, this Double Tree Hilton at SeaWorld, is 14 acres. Right. It's huge. So when Damon's talking about walking from one end of the complex clear over to the other, like, yes, we're fat men and maybe we don't get as much exercise. But that being said, like, it is a distance, it is a trek for steps to go from one place to another. And because we're in Florida, this particular property, if you're not in the tower, then you have exterior facing walkways. Like, like it, it's not internal like hallways that are always air conditioned. So when Damon shows up at my suite today to set up, he immediately is like, it is hot as hell out. <laughs> like, every, like, and he comes in and it's like, I've got the, I've had the, the AC cranked and stuff. So yeah. Ooh, speaking of, so, uh, Yes. Ooh. We're now matching sisters. Yeah. With matching fans. Um, I'll, I'll okay. give a quick uh, explanation to this. So this lovely Pride official Disney Pride collection fan um, was part of this year's Disney Pride collection. And when uh, Drew and I were at Magic Kingdom on Sunday night, we were in line for the Haunted Mansion, and this lovely woman in front of us uh, had one. And I said to Drew, I was like, where did she get that at? And he's like, I don't know. So he just went and asked her. Um, and she said that she got it at Epcot. And she told us the store, and we were going to Epcot on Monday. So we go to Epcot with Chester, and this started the escapade of the great hunt for the fucking Rainbow Love fan, because... We went to the store and they didn't have it at the one register section. And then we checked the other register section. And then we went and we asked the staff and they checked the inventory and they didn't have any. And they told us a couple other spots. And then we did, you know, most of the rest of the park and we saw some other people and we talked to them. And all of the cast members kept saying that it should be at the one store and if it's not there. And then also some guests told us to go to Disney Springs, which was already part of the plan on Wednesday. So then we went and did that on Wednesday. We go to Disney Springs. We went to three different store locations in Disney Springs. And the very last one was the only place out of almost 10 stores that actually had these fans. And they had probably about a dozen of them, but they were the only one that was left. And so apparently, like, you know, because it's no longer Pride season, you know, they were they were basically selling all of it off. So. Um, yes, so now we have matching uh, love fans. And actually, this is a good fan. Like, yes. It's, it's nicely it well made nice with an acrylic and stuff. So anyways, um, so in case you happen to see our new fans. But that was a, that was a, a whole thing that happened beforehand. But uh, yeah, so David showed up with his other fan with like <laughs> dying because of the heat. Yeah. Because like I was saying, you know, it's all unless you're at the main complex where the tower is or the um, conference center, that stuff's got interior access. Um, but then everything else is, is kind of outdoors. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just, it's, I mean, yes, it's Florida and it's hot, but it's hot this time of year, like June through September, or October is, is infamously just hot, just hot. Yeah. And it was, it's been, um, I, I was telling, I saw I told a couple of people, I've gotten used to it a little bit. I plan accordingly. Um, there is a bit of rest. So building one, which is just outside and to maybe the left or right of the, lo of the main lobby building, uh, is where the hospitality is. And uh, it is enclosed. So unlike most of the buildings here to have exterior facing uh, doors, it has interior facing. So there's a hallway. So I can tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've walked through that hallway just to be like, 
a little bit of rest. Now, is it cooler? A little bit, but it's obviously, it doesn't have an HD unit in it. It's just an interior building. So it's a nice little cooling moment. And you can, I, I say this, I have stood at a doorway just outside the door and just prop my stuff on the wall and be like, take it back. <laughs> cool down a little bit and then make my way out. Uh, with that being said, though, I will say uh, the event is doing pretty well. Um, Gary, obviously, you can't end everything, but uh, Thursday, I attended the first party contest, and then uh, I think that was the end. We have done a little more. But uh, Friday, yesterday, I did uh, Bear Bingo. I did uh, our drag. I did uh, the role play class that my friend Clay was running. And I did uh, the vendor market a couple times. So uh, I got a really nice, a really nice harness from uh, Dirty South Leather. Um, they've been. Uh, They were a Cincinnati Leather a couple of years ago, and they have grown so much. So I and their work is good; they can make it really quickly. As a matter of fact, I today I ordered suspenders. I have my harness, and I really love it. And I was like, "I really want suspenders to have that." And it had just enough of the leather that I got to make them again. And I ordered it at right before one o'clock, like maybe. That. And it's ready. Like it was ready before I even got here. So uh, I'm going to see if I can pick it up. It, we'll see how this all goes. But the been more closes at five, but we'll see. Anyway, with that being said, um, I've obviously been attending the contest. Last night was a. Uh, the vendor market opened from 10.30 to midnight, and they did a new shopping. You didn't have to get new, but if you wanted to, you could be naked and stop. And walk. Um, so let me tell you this. I did not get naked, but man, was it a wonderful thing. Um, just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ellie's and beers. Oh, and I mean, not and granted, not everyone is naked, but again, those that were, it was not just me. Um, now these these multiple naked vendor hour things that they're doing, like it's usually at the top of the day or at the end of the day. If I'm correct, they've been giving discounts. If you're yes. new during that time or something, right? Yes, discount like a, I think it's like a ten percent or fifty percent discount if you're actually naked. And I, um, can't yeah, pass the deal up sometimes, and I'm not afraid of being. Uh, I was just having. I didn't get there until eleven ish, and I think it ended at midnight. And I was like, I really don't feel like taking all my clothes off, walking around for a little bit, and then putting my clothes back on, like trying to figure out what to do. I ain't got time. So, timeless laziness became <laughs> the reason ultimate. Because I wore my heart, I wore my new harness, and I I had an ensemble on. Because um, last night was also the Hellfire Gala. So this weekend's theme is heroes and villains. And I think it's actually superheroes. And, uh, so there's been this very ongoing, like, superhero comic book kind of theme. And the third, the Marvel third, I don't know if you can hear it here. There we go. And, um, 
with that being said, there it was really great to see. The people it's very amazing the talent and creativity people have and how just even adding just a few little attributes, uh uh trinkets, what have you, they'll make an outfit to be superior. You know, just simple uh there was one guy uh, they got jackets. Him and his husband got jackets of the X Men. It was like an X, and it was yellow and black. And they just wore that. They wore some little corn jeans, and then one had the Cyclops like visor glasses, and one had the little ring on. And it was just perfect. It worked. I mean, you could show again. They were both very handsome. Men. Uh, uh, and it was great. It was great. So, um, and after that, the market, the Bill Park Gala, Friday night, uh, there was hospitality, and uh, there's obviously the quote unquote den of mission that uh, is the place based. Um, and that is interesting. They 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 they've had it open both nights, and they changed. They definitely changed from Thursday to Friday, and I know why. Uh, as we've mentioned, we ain't got all the help of hell, and the original entrance was right at the exit to get the step to go down. Okay. So it was up on the second floor. So if people were congregating or random guests that's not a part of the crime after walking through or walking by, they, I'm pretty sure they would really get a get a idea of what So on Friday, they moved the entrance from there to the more off center the bigger space. It's like it's a bigger suite, bigger than this. Uh, 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 it was it was nice. They 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 just that they did some lighting and all the stuff they made it dark without being And there, there's the contest. Uh, trying to get into what's going on. Um, we had two nights so far. Thursday night was sort of the. It was swimwear and onstage. Last night was fantasy wear and theme. Uh, and then tonight will be like normal. There are throughout the three categories, there are six contestants. And if you were looking at the um, follow the event and what have you, will know that there's been a difference. Um, there were three nine contestants, there are six throughout the uh, title. There are no pet contestants. Um, the in fact, the for one reason or another, or any, uh, and then one of the Bomber Bear title uh, contestants uh, decided to drop. So that leaves four bear, one mama, and one up. Uh, and it has been so much fun. Um, the contestants are really working hard. They're doing a really amazing job with the themes and what have you. They are presenting themselves well. Um, there's a few, as a person, Judge Ali, <laughs> been a contestant in contest before. 
I do have those kind of people. Uh, but I see, I see the front runner. I see people who I would love to get the title. Fair is the main one where there's the competition, but there's like four contestants. Um, but Mom and Cub also still need to make the total. So, part of minimum. Yeah, I think it's for if you're in a title and you're the only contestant, in order to win or place as the only person, you have to, I think, at 80%, I think, of the total possible points or something of that sort. Mm-hmm. So it's possible you can compete in your title and not make it. Right. Yeah, it is possible. Did you hear me? Yeah. Okay, just make sure. Um, anyway, uh, other than that, it's been, um, it's been a fun weekend. It's been, um, an interesting weekend. I think, like I said, the main issue for me is getting the steps, uh, walking around and doing all of that. That's been my main concern. The restaurant here, uh, I think there's Laguna and then there's a, um, uh, the market and they do like pizza and stuff. I haven't gotten anything really there, but we've been to the Laguna once. We went there for lunch on Thursday. Um, and it's good. It's got a it's a very much a traditional bar food type of restaurant. They've got sandwiches, they've got um appetizers and ticket tips and those kinds of things. So it's a very what I would consider a general, like, here's food. Pretty much a good, if you were a restaurant for a hotel that has a lot of guests from all over the place, something that is would be consistent throughout any restaurant. I think like that would kill you. Um, Uh, oh, um, as I said, tonight is the finale of the contest. We'll get to dinner and we'll figure out all that happens. I'm very curious how interviews today. Um, as we mentioned, AJ and Zach and our um, Glitter Bear team are um, all judges. Uh, is there a current final holder? Uh, so I would love, I, there's a part of me that wants to pick so bad. <laughs> I want to know. Um, they ought and how they feel about the test test is after judging. Um, one thing I will say there is one international um, contestant. He is hot. Uh, he, is from, he is from Paraguay, but I think he lives in Brazil. Um, and he is running for bear. He's a beautiful man. And uh, he's bringing a unique take on contest. Uh, I have some concerns that things may be getting lost in translation. But other than that, I think he will be okay and do well. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the people kind of the decider. And, and there is there's dinner, then contest, then uh, docs and talk. I was like, so, and tomorrow is track match. So, one final. Yeah. Um, so tonight, after the conclusion of the contest, I think, or at the very end of the contest, I should say, there will be two other uh, items. They're expected to announce next year's dates and location. Um, Drew was telling me he was in the hot tub or in the pool talking to somebody who I guess is from the local area. And they're like, they should just have this event here every year. <laughs> Drew was like, he did, I don't know if he actually says this to the person, but it's like, you're kind of missing the point of world bear, like, 
this run moves, it travels around, it goes from city to city, like it's most likely going to start going international at some point. So like this isn't because the hotel that we're at, just so folks know, is also the tidal wave uh, gay days type uh, host event location. Um, so like, yeah, like, you know, they're very comfortable with the LGBTQ plus community, but they, you know, they're not expected to keep having it here. But I, I understand this person's perspective. Orlando is a tourism town. It has all the theme parks. Like, it, you know, it has a lot of different amenities. It's a major metropolitan area, easily to fly into um, for transit, you know, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it's still, it, it isn't expected to stay here. Um, so there's that they're going to announce the new location and then they'll announce the winners. Um, I'm now very curious, knowing about the people who are no longer running, what that means for specifically AJ with World Pet, because if there is no contestants, then uh, <laughs> I mean, theoretically, I, he was preparing to step aside and give a speech. So I don't know, like, if, if he's still considered an active title holder for another year or if it there just isn't a title holder for a year. And then in another year, when there is theoretically contestants, he would then present to the next winner. I, I don't know how that works. So in certain contests, depending on what it is, um, they will either have... The title hope will be shelved, so no one gets the title AJ as the current reign will not continue reigning. It'll just take a be on a shelf for a year and then it'll come back. Kind of what they did with Mama Bear. That's that possibility. If AJ agrees and this is his choice, he could continue in the title to keep it going for the next year and then kind of do what he did this year. Uh, that would be his, I would hope it is safe, but that would be his point. Uh, if that is what they run by him. Um, it's happened both ways. I've seen it happen both ways. Um, the reason I hope that they ask and make it sure that AJ is okay with it is that they have to ask him. Uh, a friend of ours, a friend of mine, um, kind of sort of got forced to continue the title when the one was ready for it for next year. And he was kind of blindsided with it. He wasn't told anything about it. He wasn't asked. He wasn't offered it. He just was kind of, and you're competing and you're going to do it for next year. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, you didn't ask. Me. Right. So he ended up giving up title after a few months of being in it for the additional year or so. So, yeah. I don't, yeah, I agree. I mean, that's that's a crappy thing to hear that happened to someone. I don't think they would do that here, but your point is well taken that they should ask, you know, about what the what they want to do for the coming year, which I think it's perfectly valid for any contestant in that situation, no matter who they are, to say, I've done my year. And, like, that's it. Like, you know. Right. <laughs> I'm good. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in terms of the run, like, you know, a little bit of my impression is the layout of the property being so large and everything spaced out has, has made it difficult to, like, get a sense of where who all is here in, like, a condensed kind of way. Um, and... Uh, it's interesting because a comment was kind of made like, well, there's not a lot to do, which is kind of debatable. There's a lot of stuff on the schedule. There's a fair amount of overlap. But the point was well taken. If you're not into playing bingo, if you're not into the demo workshops, then there's not really a whole lot of else other than just going to the pool or, you know, doing some other stuff. So you're kind of at the mercy of just whatever and I so I kind of made a quip about it. I was like hello it's a bear run what don't you understand the point is to get drunk and fuck and 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 or to fuck like mm -hmm. hello right right so anyways 
But so that's kind of our, our summation uh, being here live with um, World Bear Weekend. Obviously, there's the rest of Saturday to get through into Sunday um, and the travel home. And maybe we'll talk more about that at another point. But that's that's the uniqueness. It's a first for me in all the years of bear runs um, having illness. And then, of course, it's got to be COVID. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I know it's been hard. And I'm sure you're I, – I, I feel – you're probably having that FOMO, not even FOMO, it's kind of MO. Like, I'm missing, or IMO, I'm missing out. <laughs> I mean, a, a little bit, but not a whole lot. Like, I'm here, I can hear the music um, of the multiple DJs. I like the first one best. Shout out to, to Candy Bear. Um, I just like the music that they were playing as a set. Um, I've heard several songs many a time. Uh, so it's obviously like more current top 40 popular songs that keep repeating. Um, but yeah, like there are some things I'm kind of missing out on and, you know, what am I going to do? You know, it's, and the thing is, like I had said to to Drew, I was like, if this was NAB in Kentucky, I would have drove, driven to Kentucky. I would have drove my ass home. Like I, I just would have left. I wouldn't have checked into the hotel. I would have been like, I gotta go. Like I gotta go home to be in my own house, to isolate, to rest up or whatever for several mm-hmm, days. Mm-hmm. I can't do that here. Like I, I you know, I, I'm still navigating my travel return home um, and, and that kind of stuff. And, and I have, I don't return to work till Tuesday. No, I don't return to work till Wednesday, luckily, but I still might take a day off uh, as sick leave. Cause like, I will say this as we wrap, Ooh, baby. Like, I don't have the stamina. Like, it it happened when we checked into the hotel. We checked in, got the stuff out of the car. We're on the second floor. There's no elevator. So taking stuff upstairs, there's multiple trips back and forth, luggage, baggage, baggage full of groceries and drinks and stuff like from the other hotel we were at, which is all fine and dandy. But, you know, we got unpacked and everything and I was wiped. Like, I had to sit down. I was like, I, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, this sucks ass. And it kind of happened today. We went out for breakfast this morning. We went back to the place we went earlier, had yummy breakfast. I could only eat half. And I came back. And I was like, God, like, so, you know, and I know better. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be 100% for a while. And I'm in the midst of dealing with this, but still. So yeah. there, there's, uh, you know, it's kind of the best call of, of what's going on. And I do feel bad because there's a whole bunch of people here, a good dozen that I'd like to see that I haven't seen in a while. And they know I'm here because they probably saw me on the apps. Uh, you know, they just haven't seen me mm-hmm. um, to say hi, you know, and whatever. And it's like, well, I don't as I said to AJ in a chat, I don't want to be the typhoid Gary of the, you know, <laughs> bear run and, and give shit to people, you know, so. Right. So, yeah, more to come uh, on how things resolve and all that. You'll probably hear it in the um, some of the more or different details in the what's going on uh, as we wrap up the month. But that is uh, us at World Bear Weekend here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, and Florida. Um, we look forward to seeing who wins the titles and congratulating them. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by again. Sorry. Mm-hmm. It's a bear run. What do we expect? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye.